going to take you on a tour of what has got to be one of the most unusual and selective institutions of higher learning in the country. It's called Deep Springs College. Located in a lonely desert valley in Central California, Deep Springs is a two-year school for stout-hearted men only, and tuition, room and board are free. It doesn't look much like a college campus, does it? No ivy-covered walls, no bell tower or fancy dorms, no gymnasium or football stadium. But then, there are only 24 students here, and they don't need a carillon to tell them when it's time to feed the animals. And a gymnasium? They get plenty of exercise without one. And ivy would be just one more thing to water in this desert valley. You see, Deep Springs is more than just a college, it's a working ranch. Everybody pitches in, even college president Brant Keough. He was a student himself here back in the 50s. You're as apt to find him helping fix the roof for plumbing as at a faculty meeting. That's not part of the job description, but it's something that I do because, one, I enjoy it, and two, because I happen to know more about it than most people around here. How else could it be leaking under this? The original conception of the school was to provide an experience in a small community where the students are given a great deal of responsibility, where the consequences of that, of their performance, is evident. As to say, if the Dairy Boys uh, don't do well, there's not enough milk, and in fact, that's the case at the moment because the breeding schedule in the cows was messed up and at the moment we're short of milk and we're going to be shorter before it gets better. Well, that's a very real consequence. This is a creative job. It's very responsible. I'm in charge of ordering all the food. I'm in charge of ordering stuff like toilet paper and soap and paper towels for everybody else. So um, I'm in trouble if I screw things up. I mean, if I run out of coffee, that's it. Um, I'm gone. They'll, they'll brew me through a strainer and, and drink me. She was the first of many writers to... But for all the emphasis on physical labor, academics are taken just as seriously. The one thing I've never had to do here is cut back on a reading list or cut back on assignments because I thought they would be too difficult. And that's, that's really nice. I like There's a full-time faculty of five, but additional professors are recruited to teach special courses. Dr. Giuseppe Mezzata of Yale recently taught the literature of madness and another class on Dante. These are kids who are so gifted, uh, and in many ways they are, they are ahead of everybody else. You know, I feel that they come here because they were outstanding in their own high schools. They have come here lured by the idea of a community where they find guys who are like them, maybe a little bit off, a little bit strange, and the dialogue among them goes on, and the dialogue takes place through books. There's certainly enough time for that dialogue. Nobody leaves campus, not for a hamburger, not for a magazine. Everybody eats together, students, faculty, even faculty kids. There's not a whole lot of privacy here. It's a pretty intense lifestyle. They like to call it the Deep Springs experience. To me, I think it, it means a way of life. Um, it means it means that kind of union of, of practical and, and intellectual work. Uh, and it means living closely with people. Uh, my own personal feelings are I love it a lot, and I hate it a lot. And it's a struggle to live here as it is anywhere else, but I think the struggle is worthwhile. Deep Springs alumni include the late CBS News correspondent Charles Collingwood, a Virginia representative, and more recently our guest this morning, Yale University student David Arndt. People at Deep Springs can't answer a direct question about this place. <laughs> um, it's also a stream of consciousness. Maybe if we compared it to what you're currently doing, is there an equivalent Yale experience? Um, no, I don't think so. I think Yale is sufficiently diverse that people can find their own niche within it, whereas Deep Springs, you're kind of forced into a certain situation that you have to cope with. You have to be real smart to get, uh, to get the attention of Deep Springs. But having said that, what did you you fellows seem to have in, in common. Well, I think, as Stephen Longmire said, um, it was a, he said, Deep Springs was a way of life. And uh, I think that's probably one of the things that I find most absent from Yale is that um, a shared vision of a way of life um, about what, you know, how you want to live, a union of uh, intellect and practical work. A little utopia. Well, not, not really utopia in the sense of um, 
uh, an abstract thing, but utopia in the sense of how, how I can structure my environment to relate to people in a different way. What was it like Standing. looking at the, at, the, at the pictures? It was, uh, made me feel like I wanted to be back there. When you grow up <laughs> and you wax <laughs> nostalgic over your college years, will it be for Yale or Deep Springs? It'll be for Deep Springs. No doubt about it. Well, I, I can't really say at this point because um, I've just started at Yale and uh, it's completely different, but I am, I am enjoying it very much. You have to uh, totally um, go about knowing people in a different way. Yeah, you don't have to milk the cows. No. <laughs> David, I, thank you. Thank you. We'll be back after this.